Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, we're going to be designing a footer component. So let's get started. So this is the footer component that we're going to be designing in this video. We have our main section frame. Inside the main section frame, we have this action block component, which is made up of these header and button components that we created in previous videos. So we have this header and button component. Then we have our section break, which is just a rectangle shape with one height and it's spanning the 12 columns. Then we have this footer contents wrapper frame. Inside that frame, we have our brand logo frame with a text element inside. Then we have this footer links block, which is just a frame with 16 auto layout applied to it and a bunch of text elements inside. So each of these text elements will have 16 padding between them. So if we were to add another text element, it would create a new instance with 16 padding. Then we have our footnote component, which is just a frame with a text element inside. The text element has constraints center and center applied to it, and it's also taken on a paragraph shared style. The footnote frame has constraints left and right and bottom applied, so the footnote will always be fixed to the bottom of the frame. Then the footer contents wrapper, the section break, and the action block all have constraints center and top applied to them. So if we were to resize this frame, everything would stay in the center and we can use it for other device sizes as well. So let's start building this out. So I'm gonna go back to our main desktop frame where we had created these components in a previous video and I'm going to start creating my footer component. I'm gonna start by adding a frame inside my desktop frame. So I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard to add a frame and just have it span the width of this desktop frame. I'm going to rename this frame to footer and then I'm going to toggle my columns on by hitting Control G. I'm gonna start by creating the action block component. And the action block component is made up of a header asset and a button asset. So let's grab those from our assets panel. I'm gonna grab a header and I'm going to grab a button. I'm gonna make sure they're both centered inside my footer frame, center. And I'm gonna have them at 32 pixel padding from each other. I'm going to change the alignment of my text element to have them be center aligned. And I'm also going to have them take on the navy shared style. I'm going to have the paragraph be a 50% of the navy shared style. And then I'm going to place them both inside of a frame. So option command G. And I'm going to rename this frame to action block. I'm going to apply auto layout to this frame so that my 32 is always maintained, even if I were to change my header. And then I'm going to turn this action block frame into a reusable component. So I'm going to cut and paste it inside my molecular elements. I'm going to have it take on a white shared style. Then I'm gonna to go to the top and click create component. So now if you go to your assets tab, you'll have this action block. I'm gonna go back to my desktop frame and just drag and drop it in. I'm gonna have it be at 104 from the footer frame. 104. And now I'm going to create my section break. So I'm going to add a rectangle shape inside my frame. So I'm going to hit R on the keyboard. Have that span 12 columns. So that's 12. And that's 12. Now you just notice that our uh, action block is actually one pixel off. So let's just bring that down one. And let's have this rectangle. Let's just rename it to section break gonna have that be a height of one and I'm going to change its fill to like a lighter gray that looks good let's have it also be at 104 from the action block 104 now I'm going to start creating my content wrapper which is made up of our brand logo frame and our links block frame so I'm gonna go grab a brand logo and have that span two columns I'm going to have it be at 80 pixel padding from our section break. Then I'm going to skip four columns 
and create our links block. Our links block is just a frame with some text elements inside of it. One of the text elements is going to have a header style and the rest of the text elements are going to have a paragraph style. So let's do that. I'm gonna add a text element. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and just have it span two columns. Let's say header. I'm gonna have this header be auto height so that my width is always fixed, but my height is responsive. I'm going to style it differently. I'm gonna bring down the font a bit. I'm gonna have it be uppercase styling. And then I'm going to give it a gray fill. Now I'm going to create this into a new shared style. So I'm gonna click the four dots and click create style. And I'm gonna call the style footnote. So now we have a new footnote shared style, great. So now let's create our footer links. I'm just going to duplicate this text element. I'm gonna hold option down and drag to 16. I'm going to have it take on a paragraph shared style, and then I'm going to have it take on also the navy shared style. I'm gonna say this is a footer link, footer link. And then I'm going to apply auto layout to this links block frame. So I'm gonna click auto layout, detected that 16. So now if we create a new instance of this footer link, it'll create new instances with 16 pixel padding applied. So now let's just duplicate this links block. So I'm gonna hold option down and drag. Then I'm gonna hit command D. So now that they're all 24 pixels from each other. And then I'm gonna select them all and I'm going to change their constraints to right and center. I'm gonna do the same for my brand logo. I'm gonna have that left and top. Then I'm gonna select my brand logo and links block. Make sure that they're top aligned and then I'm gonna place them all inside of a frame. So option command G. And this frame is going to be called footer content wrapper. It's going to be at eight pixels from the section break. That's perfect. And now let's just create our footnote component. So I'm going to add a text element. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and have that span 12 columns. Say this is a footnote. And this is where you can add copyright information. I'm just gonna have this take on a paragraph shared style. Detach it for a sec, give it auto height and paragraph shared style. Then I'm going to place it inside of a frame. So option command G, I'm gonna call this frame footnote. Then I'm going to hold option and command down and drag the sides of this component so that both sides increase at the same time. And I'm also going to do that vertically so that there's eight pixel padding. That's nine, eight. Let's give this frame a fill now. It's gonna take the navy shared style. And my text element is going to have the white shared style. And it's going to have constraint center and center applied to it. So if we resize this footnote, it should always be at the center. Perfect. So now let's just change this footnote into a reusable component. So I'm going to cut and paste it inside my atomic element. I'm gonna put it next to my header notification. Then I'm gonna to go to the top and click create component. So if we go to our assets tab, we have a reusable footnote component now. So I'm gonna go back to my desktop frame and just drag and drop it into my footer content frame. Center it and have it be at 80 from our footer content wrapper. That's 80, perfect. Now let's just resize our footer frame. And our desktop frame. So now all that's left is to turn this footer into a reusable component and we're done. So I'm going to grab my footer, cut and paste it into my molecular elements. I'm gonna give it a white shared style for its background. Then I'm gonna go to the top and click create component. So now if we go back to our desktop, we just have to drag and drop our footer component in. Center and at the bottom and we're done. Now we have a reusable footer component. So let's see how this is all looking like. So I'm gonna click my, my desktop and go to present. So this is our website. We have our hero. We got our slider component. We have our callouts with these animated chips inside. We have this fold component. 
we have our testimonial component and we have our footer component. And that's our website. So far, we've learned a lot about shared styles and reusable components, and we used our components to build this website. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. I'll be posting videos later on interaction principles and Figma prototype. I'll catch you in the next video.